This is Profit Talks, a podcast produced by Hayek Global College and dedicated to exploring how you can ethically maximize profits. For more episodes, please visit hayekcollege.com slash profit. Hello, my guest today is Marcelino Hermida. He is an executive with over 15 years of experience acting in senior roles in the education industry. And that it was in both higher and lower education in areas of human resource and organizational development. Hello, Marcelino. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hello, Edson and everybody. How are you? It's a pleasure to be here also. Thanks a lot for the invitation and the presentation. It was very nice. I hope I can aggregate a lot of content and enjoy our conversation now. Definitely. So, Marcelino, tell us a little bit about you and your experiences. Okay. Uh, well, uh, because of family questions, I started my whole ca career in educational area. I started doing uh, lots of things in a school or, or in a university. And I have the opportunity to start working with a lot of different people, uh, knowing process of different areas, and knowing the, the whole business of the education. I am graduated in administration so I, I could always have a, a, a owner's eyes in the business and aggregate with all my competences that I, wa I, will, uh, I was, in, in fact, observing during my course or my graduation. So you were, you were in a family business? Right, so that's why you you started doing the education, uh, being an executive in the education industry. And what did what did you start out with first? Was exactly. it higher or, or lower education your your first business? Yes, my first business was in higher education. I started doing administrative administrative positions, and also I worked as a professor for seven years, and I learned a lot being professor. Uh, having contact with the students in my working day. And I also could develop uh, other skills and competences uh, about communication, about management, about leadership. And it was always a huge pleasure and uh, an opportunity to me to become even more uh, capacitated and uh, able to uh, manage our business and develop the res uh, the results that we are uh, looking for at th that time. Excellent, <laughs> Marcelino. Coming coming uh, coming back uh, to, to to you you you've been a, a quite successful leader, and you were also responsible for the selection process and developments of other leaders while at your business. And you also working in the education industry is also a place where we can um, have a mission to develop new leaders as we go. And to you, uh, what are the main qualities of a leader? Perfect. This is a very, very nice question, Edson, because being a leader is something that you can learn or something that you can uh, have it from the, your talent as a gift. So you have uh, both ways to become a real leader. And we have lots of methods or uh, methodologies that you can go in learning this kind of ability or uh, capacity to lead your teams, your company, your business at all. Uh, I think that the most important in leadership is to is to really lead, be serving, doing with your team. Uh, the the real leader he is always involved in the projects. He is always doing the things with the team. Uh, 
he has the, this this um, very very important uh, thing that is to know the the whole business uh, at all and the specific parts of the business acting as a business partner partner for example going into the areas uh, talking to people uh, really knowing about the the company culture this is very important also so we have different style styles of leadership but i think uh that there is not a, a, a one a only one right uh, style you can always have to adapt be, depending on the moment of, of on the company uh we we're seeing this time of crisis this is mm -hmm. a time that you need a leadership more strong or you have to uh, expect more results from your team so you can always go in uh, adapting and developing your leadership style you you mentioned a quality of a leader that a leader should be a server he he should serve uh his his fellow teams right if i understand correctly what what do you mean by that um if because when we think of a leader, leader is usually someone who is on top, right? And you're talking about a quality of a leader that's supposed to serve the others. What do, what do you mean by that? Perfect. Thanks for the question. Uh, I mean that the leader is not established by uh, a role or a, a function that he has on the, the company. Uh, the leadership is implemented by the example, by your behavior, by things that you do, that you really believe, they are genuine, that makes other people follow you. They respect you because of your behavior, because of your qualities, because of your competence, and not because you are a director, a CEO, or a principal for a, a college or a school. Uh, do you know what it means? You, you really have yes. to uh, to uh, have this respect, but because of your attitudes, not because your role or function on the company. Yes, uh, it's 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 very. It, it, we have to differentiate very well. You know the the usual, well, what it means to be a boss and what it means to be a, a leader, and what the the issue is when we actually go to the to our job. Uh, it, it's very different. I had the, this experience when I first became uh, not, a, I, I wasn't a leader, I was still a manager, right? When I first became a manager also in, a, in the family business with very little experience of managing other people, I had a little trouble in reconciling what I should, because I, I had to get stuff done, but at the same time, I had to lead people. And if I was too soft with the people, they wouldn't get the stuff done. And I, I had a tendency of, of being uh, very, very hard and telling them what to do. You know, this, things should be done my way. You should do things like that because I needed to get the results done. And that it, it, it was counterintuitive to me that I wasn't being a good leader because I was just telling them what to do. What do you, what do you think about that? Did you have any similar experience in your, in your jobs? For sure, uh, I think this is your deployment is is true. I re I truly understand because is it it is on our executive day the this challenge to equilibrate to balance the goals uh, the process with people behavior people desires people uh, uh, limitations. So uh, I, I know the difficulties and the, the challenge, as I said. So you have to uh, ally your sensibility, your experience as a manager with uh, methods or uh, te techniques that you can always measure, follow uh, the results, and always feedback your team with... Uh, directions and things that you respect from them this is very very important 
uh, the feedback is uh, not used as the way it has to be used uh, or uh, the, the appropriated way to, re to reach the results and to be the, all the team and the company to be more integrated, to be more um, ag aggregating their uh, actions and their roles to the company's goals and strategic plan. I think this is uh, difficult, but we can do a, a great job if we are uh, oriented to people, if we always uh, trying to be, to be more representative more uh, about diversity about culture about generations in the company uh, i think balance is is the word we can answer this question yes and one thing that is important that you mentioned is we have to think of uh, leadership as putting getting teams together and getting people to work uh, as a team and that leads to to me to ask a question um, you you were uh, an expert in uh, selection process and you you've done it uh, quite a while uh, uh, probably I don't know over a thousand uh, candidates you you have interviewed already right in your life so what do you what what is it that you look for in candidates when you're doing the selection process perfect uh, we all always reach for the best can, candidate for that spot or that opportunity. We will not uh, ever ha has a perfect candidate because we are not perfect. We are humans. We have our limitations and our abilities. So in the, the selective process, we hope to, to find the candidate most appropriated to that opportunity. In which ways? connection to the company culture and values, uh, as we call it, the cultural fit, the match that we, we have bef between the candidate and the company. So this is very, very important because uh, as the candidate goes through, through uh, the time that he's going working in the company, uh, this kind of, of match of connection will be very important to their to the, this kind of uh, work has uh, uh, some kind of um, purpose uh, we know that people work because of the money they have to uh, pay bills they have to use money on, on their lives but the principal thing that they are looking for is the experience is the the opportunity to grow with the company so if you we can ally purpose with uh, engagement with uh, identity to the company's culture and process and people this is the the best scenario we can have managing this kind of select selective process fantastic and is there um so there's a difference between the person's technical abilities and how it adheres to the values of, of the company, right? How the person adheres to the values of the company with their own values and their culture. Yes, and they are calling hard skills and soft skills. The technique skills, the, the knowing, experience, ability, and the behavior, the soft skills, they are most valorized nowadays in this, those processes. Awesome. And when you say uh, that the... That the there's a certain cultural fit that the person has to have to a certain company. Are these values universal? Meaning that, for example, uh, we can think about certain values like integrity, uh, mm. bias towards working and towards action, uh, entrepreneurship. Do you think those values are universal or are different for different companies? Fantastic question, Edson. I think the the both things we have values that are universal like you said integrity quality uh confidence confidence uh, uh, uh the ability to uh, do uh, a job team to leader to 
aggregate, those are universal uh, values, but we also can have a specific values from, from specific co companies, depending on their segment or depending on their uh, real culture, particular culture that the founder of the president uh, created during the existence of the company. Yeah, some things I can think about, for example, if you're in the tech business, uh, you probably won't be required to arrive on time uh, on your job. You, you're gonna, yes. You, you're going to work from home or you, you just have to get the job done and there's probably no uh, dress code if you're working on such business. Uh, at the same time, uh, if you're if you're working on say I don't know a traditional university, and you're going to be a professor there, one you have to be on time because you're going to have to teach the lesson, and two there's also going to be a, some some type of dress code or something, or um, any any other type of business, or for example an auditing company or something that there's there's more of a a, a dress code and a, a way to 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 be. So that that's yeah. probably that probably makes a difference too on on how if the candidate is comfortable with that type of situation in either ways, it would make a difference on uh, if it, he's a, a good fit or not for the company, right? Perfect, perfect. Uh, because of that, the the candidate has to look for a company or a segment that he is very uh, familiar or he is looking for some experience like that. Uh, for example, uh, when you work at the law, we have a formal market, a formal behavior uh, in uh, publicity uh, agencies. We have a, an informal way to work. We can have a, another kind of dress code. So you, you have to adapt uh, uh, which reality you are working or living on and you going reaching for the positions and, and from the places, you become more comfortable and productive and you can ally your purpose as a professional, as a, 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 a talent with your results you are looking for and, and also the company expect, expect from you uh, as activities and results also. And so this is a very, very interesting uh, conversation because this is very, very dynamic. We don't have a, an, a unique answer or a, new, uh, a right way. The strat strategy depends a lot of the culture uh, of the company. If you, have, if do, you don't have a, a real strategic plan, goals, objectives, real defined, you cannot the, the probability of the company be su successful is going uh, in a right in the wrong way so you you as a manager as a leader uh, have to always uh, looking for this kind of balance uh, integrating areas develop the, developing the communication in about the 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 functions and the people who is working on the company. So I think it's a, it's a, a very challenge, but it's very grateful when you reach the goals and you can um, see people becoming uh, better and going up on their positions in the company. Excellent, excellent. And Marcelino, tell us a little bit about the, how you see education and how it's been affected the education industry in general by the the pandemics that we are living right now because we're in, in a crisis and many sectors have been affected and education seems to be one of the most affected because of the school closures and everything how what what is your perspective on this um i really i always see things edson in the optimist perspective uh i we are passing through a very very difficult time with the pandemic and the crisis that we we have uh, been how do I say uh, obligated to pass through 
And I think the experience of the managers, I think the strate strategy, I think that the directions can be uh, appointed as solutions, not as problems. So I always try to see things like this. So uh, we, we had a huge impact in the number of students. We stayed about six months closed just with the online classes. Uh, so we, we were, as you said, really, really impacted by the crisis. Uh, lots of schools uh, did not resist about the, this difficult time, uh, one of them uh, closed their operation and we are trying to pass through this turbulence as the better way we can. So I also think that the, the, cri the crisis can represent an opportunity uh, in terms of new business, of partnerships, of... Um, how do I say, you can be more close to other schools or other competitors that you are not able to become close in other time. So uh, we are trying to do some kind of uh, partnerships with other schools and we are being very, very uh, su successful uh, trying to implement uh, actions that can make the school resist in this crisis and in a, in a few time, we hope to become growing uh, and have more students and consolidating our, our branding and uh, passing through this time in the best way we can. It's, you, you mentioned something interesting there because uh, at, at one point, you we're going through a crisis and your business has been heavily impacted, right, in, in the... Uh, education as a school but at the same time you're, you're seeing that there's opportunities that you didn't have before having the crisis even though you're yes. not probably um, the financials are not as healthy as it was before you're seeing opportunities that wasn't there before and what 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 are these types of opportunities just so we we we, we pinpoint them is it finding new 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 New, new, new partners. What, what is it exactly? Perfect. We have uh, both kind of opportunities. We have opportunities for the professional, as we said about this digital transformation, uh, the the whole packet that the pandemic make us to work it, uh, leads us to some kind of opportunities. So people who works with information technology with programmation, with uh, systems, they are going to have lots of job opportunities. Um, and we also see opportunities from the companies, from uh, schools, universities, college that um, make some kind of projects that you go into another reality, you're going to another state, for example, example, another city, we have to think uh, outside the box now and see this time of, of adversity as an opportunity to become closer to other um, players. You can share something right that you are doing that are getting some practical results. And we, you can also project this kind of, of management and a, a job, um, how, like a job rotation with the team, uh, trying to do uh, things that are not made to this kind of reality or the city or the schools, and that you can approximate to the things that you are doing right in your own reality. Uh, we also had now a very di different moment from all states here in Brazil. Uh, here Brasilia, uh, presential classes um, become at schools in the in the beginning of the the October. So in other uh, states, we are we don't have uh, any uh, estimating date 
we are we the we are having only online classes so you have to adapt your strategy and your action to each reality and each moment that we are living on perfect so that's that's i i thought i was talking to another uh entrepreneur who who said that uh it's it, it's uh, john chisholm which is the the other interviewer in in the in, in the podcast he said that this is a great time to be to try new things to be an entrepreneur yeah. because if there was traditional businesses that were already established these businesses are some are are, are ceasing to exist and the the consumer needs are changing in, in the time yeah. so there are opportunities in, on both sides in the supply side that there are less people who are able to to keep their businesses running and also on the demand side the consumers are, are reaching out for different types of, of things so it's a great time to start a new business and become an entrepreneur which me might seem counterintuitive if if we if we think about it yes and, and I, the, the customers are looking for new experience. They stay a lot of time in home, so they are going through new things. And as 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 the time as some companies uh, do not resist, as they are closing their operation, we open some space on the market that has to be uh, uh, pre uh, occupied Seriously. by another company or another time of service or solution so yeah. this is a really a huge opportunity marcelino what's what's something uh a personal question now uh, what what is something that you learned the hard way during your career that you wish you had known when you started out okay um i think there's some um abilities some competences that we only uh, get them uh, with experience not with our uh, graduation about uh, reading about theories making courses having classes some kind of experiences and uh, practical experience give us some kind of abilities of capacities that they are very very important and also difficult to explain uh, I I passed through some crises in my business uh, crisis referring to the, the external market as we are living now with the pandemic about uh, financial crisis and also internal crisis about management about uh, process, about um, directions of the, the company. Uh, so passing through those times of adversity, I learned a lot how to have patience, how to have uh, strategy, how to talk to people, to understand their needs, to looking for the solutions. Uh, difficult, we always will have. So if we had this kind of mindset, um, looking for resolution, for communication, for uh, putting yourself in, in the, the other position. So I think those kind of abilities, we have to pass through them to learn, to grow as a person and a professional. And I think we have the... The, the obligation to share with other peoples, to uh, teach peoples how to behave in the, in the organization, in the, their professional lives. And I think it was, to me, it's a great pleasure if I can always share those experiences here in, your, in the podcast with you. In my working day, I always try to... Uh, be, uh, give the opportunities or talk to people so they can learn with my experience. Awesome. It's certainly very, very rich, uh, everything you have to, to share. And uh, what's, uh, what are you curious about right now? Wow. 
I'm curious about lots of things. Uh, lots of things. It could I... be anything, not necessarily on the things we work on or okay. something that I you're like curious. I like to read books, to watch movies about the space, about this astrology, about something that we really don't know as human beings, about our desire to go to Mars, to Mars. Uh, something that to me is very, very interesting. Um, those kind of, of studies or theories that we have that they are not so really defined and we are trying to, we are looking for answers that we don't have at all. So you're curious about if we, we as humans are going to be able to explore Mars? For sure. I believe that we, we can do this. I, I think that we have abilities that we already know them, that we, our capacity is fantastic. And I, I'm, I'm, I have the, the expectation to one day uh, go in an international uh, through the Earth, <laughs> in the, <laughs> in the Earth from the space. It's not even international. It's like interworld. <laughs> More than international. If we <laughs> if we even have a word for that, I, it's probably because international is, is you're, you're traveling between nations. Yes, for sure. It's outside of the world, so that's going to be completely. Yeah, uh, I know that this kind of flight is very expensive nowadays. So. <laughs> 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 we hope it can be cheaper sometime in the future, right? For sure. And is there something I should have asked you, but I didn't? Mm, I think we can. You can ask me about um, what I, the candidate, what kind of company I am looking for now. Uh, I think we are always looking for something. We always must have this uh, desire to grow, to learn, to be the di to be the difference. And I think you can ask me something like this. So tell me, what are you looking for? Which type of company are you looking to work for? Yeah, the dream job, as we, we said. What is your dream job, exactly? Yeah, <laughs> my dream job. I think my dream job is to, I can conciliate my purpose as an educator, as a professional for education, and my ability to reach things to my group, to my company, to my team. Uh, if I can conciliate those things, I think that the, the dream job will be my, my day job. I won't have, I never want to do something by obligation or for necessity. And I will do something by my, uh, by something that are making myself proud of my professional abilities and making the difference to anybody or to somebody that uh, always, that as me, think of, about education as one of the best opportunities or ways that we have to. Uh, to build um, a more diverse, um, uh, a nation more prepared to our challenges for uh, our society at all. I think education is something that we all have to invest and look, in, and look for all days. And uh, so you, you really like education as a, as a place to work on, as, as, a, have, as a mission. And why why is it that you like education? What's what what attracts you so much in education? Uh, because I I have the this kind of um, uh, a feeling that this is the way you we can make people better about education. You will be more prepared to go through all the challenges of your life with information and knowledge, you can uh, solve problems, you can look for solutions about your pers personal and professional life, about education. 
uh, with education, we you can see the world from another perspective. You can be more critical. You can be more um, relevant in your discussions, in your professional projects. So I think the more we learn, more we have to learn. Yes. And the best way to learn is to teach, is to share. When you share, when you teach, as you're, we are doing now, you learn more. The, 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 cl the class uh, is uh, a temple that you um, learn how to respect the difference about people that you learn about with uh, someone experiences of life. So to be a professor, to work with education, to me is a, a huge privilege and something that I do my best all days. And I'm very grateful for this. Fantastic, Marcelino. Marcelino, thank you very much for our conversation today. It was an honor having you. Okay, Edson. Thanks a lot about the invitation. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And I am here if you need. I hope we can talk about more and about other things or other subjects as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Profit Talks. Now, do you have any comments or other business related questions? If so, please send us and we'll be glad to explore it in future episodes. Also, be sure to subscribe and share with your friends. We are on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and many others.